This video was sponsored by Bespoke Post. Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, <laughs> we're gonna have some fun. Let me tell you why. A few weeks ago, my buddy Jonathan Katz Moses sent me this little piece of metal. Now it's not just a piece of metal, it's this crazy cool fence stop doohickey. Basically, you hook it onto a fence on your miter saw or a crosscut sled, and it stops things, you know, so you can make repeatable cuts. This is by far the best design stop I've seen anywhere on the market, and I'm not just saying that because I like the guy. I really believe that. There's no deflection, it works great. The problem is, it doesn't fit on my crosscut sled. It fits on my miter saw fence, great. It doesn't fit on my crosscut sled, it's not designed to hook on there. So, I'm gonna make my own crosscut sled. And I'm gonna attempt to do it without going to the store. Why? Well, number one, I'm lazy. And number two, I think it'd just be fun to try and make a crosscut sled just with whatever I have laying around in the shop. Now, fortunately for me, I have a lot of random Amazon purchases and things, so this will probably be pretty easy. But you can watch me struggle through trying to make a crosscut sled. And uh, then you can get one of these. There'll be a link in the video description. And you can make your own crosscut sled. So, let's get to work. White snow, red sky, reach up. I have a ridiculous amount of plywood scraps, so that's no problem. I'm planning on building pretty much the whole thing out of plywood. I got enough here I could build like six cross-cut sleds. So I got that figured out. What I got to find is uh, a T-track. This slides into a T-track to make it you know, slide back and forth and lock down tight. So I either have to find a T-track in here somewhere or I have to make one. I know I bought some T-track at one point. Whether or not I can find it, that's another question. Don't you hate it when you know you bought something like a year and a half ago, but you just can't find it? Ah. I literally looked everywhere I could think of in my shop. And it wasn't until Ah. I found one piece, but I think that's all I need, so I'm going with it. So this is much longer than I need, but it's okay because it's aluminum, so I can cut it down. I don't even remember why I bought this. But there you go, a piece of T-Track. So in theory, this stop slides into here. The question is, will it work? Because sometimes the bolts don't fit. Not all bolts fit all the T-Track, so we'll see here. Hey, it does work. Okay, so my plan is I'm gonna mount this on top of the sled and then I can slide the stop back and forth. So this will be the top. This will slide back and forth. Now I just gotta build the sled. Also in here, I found a few of these little hold down clamp thingies. So if I have enough of this left over, I might be able to incorporate some tracks into the sled and add some little hold down clamps. We'll see. I don't know. I had a general idea of the design of the sled in my head just from seeing other sleds, you know, in various places. I wanted it to be made out of three quarter inch material, and of course, that was at the very bottom of the pile. But I happened to find a unused sheet of four by eight birch pre-finished, which is gonna be great because the pre-finished surface is nice and slick, which I'm hoping will allow it to slide on top of the saw a little easier. So the first thing I did was cut out the base plate for the crosscut sled. I ripped it down on the table saw, and then because I'm lazy and didn't want to get out the track saw, I just trimmed it down to size using the miter saw. And wouldn't you know it, slides around pretty good. It does have a slight bow to it, but I think once I get it all braced, that will be taken care of. The next thing I needed to do was find something to make my miter slot guide things out of. I was looking for a piece of hard maple, and after a little digging, I found the perfect piece. 
All right, I'm at a crossroads. Like I said, my original plan was to take this piece of T-track and stick it on top of the front fence so that I could slide the stop back and forth. But I was digging around looking for some hard maple to do my miter little guide things. And I found this thing, 36 inch piece of, you know, extruded aluminum T-track top. So now I'm like, could I make this part of my front fence? Now the issue here is, as you know, the blade has to pass through whatever the material is. Can I just cut through aluminum on the table saw? I know I can do it on the miter saw. And I'd only have to do it once to get my initial, you know, line. But will it destroy me and or my table saw? I don't know. Should I just go for it? <laughs> I mean, you only live once and you have 10 fingers, so you might as well take a few risks. So after deciding to go in that direction, I ran my hard maple through the joiner to get a nice straight edge. And then I cut down two pieces that will be my miter slot guide thingies. I wanted them to be, you know, nice and snug in there, but not so snug that there was any resistance. They needed to move freely without racking left to right. After getting them cut to the proper size, I ran them through the planer to thin them down until they were just under the top surface of the table saw. Then because they were under and I needed to attach them to the bottom of the sled, I needed to lift them up a little bit. I did this simply by putting a few pennies in that miter slot just to raise them up above the surface of the table saw. Then I brought my fence over until it was the distance I wanted it from the blade. For this I did 12 inches. And then I added some CA glue to the top of each one of those hard maple miter slot guides. Then I applied some of the accelerator spray onto the base piece of the sled and making sure that that base piece was firm and flush against my fence I just laid it down and pressed until the glue was dry. After a few minutes of rubbing the bottom of my sled like I like it a lot, I flipped it over and my miter slot guides were securely fastened. But not really securely fastened. With the pre-finished ply I wasn't confident that they'd stay put so I drilled a few countersunk holes through each guide and I added some three quarter inch screws to make sure that they stayed exactly where I wanted them. Okay, so I have my miter guides attached to the base of my sled. It's sliding pretty good. I think it could be better, but I'm also gonna paste wax everything up and I'm not gonna fine tune it yet because once I put those brace pieces on, there's a little bit of a bend to the base of the sled and I think when I put those brace pieces on the front and back, it'll straighten that out and that might actually make it run a little better. So I don't want to adjust anything until I have that done. So now I got to figure out the front and the back. I decided to go for the aluminum fence. I'm just going to cut through it with my table saw, see what happens. So, but I'm also going to brace it with some regular plywood. So it's going to be wood, aluminum, and then there'll be another brace piece on the front. Let's do it. So with a loose plan in place, I started ripping down plywood. Now I'm going to laminate up a few pieces of plywood together to make a nice inch and a half thick fence on the front and the back. I'm just cutting down some pieces of three quarter inch ply roughly and then I'll slather them in glue and clamp them together. Like this, see, I just said I was gonna do this and now I'm doing it because I don't wanna let you guys down. So after all my pieces were good and smeared with glue, I put them in clamps and the only thing to do now was to sit around and wait for glue to dry. So I did what I always do while I wait for glue to dry. I played a few soulful songs on my tin whistle. And I invented a few new sports for my future woodshop Olympic games that I'm planning in the near future. This one's called Hover Chair. 
This video was sponsored by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a monthly box full of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Things like home bar stuff, outdoor gear, style, and so much more. They just sent me a box. Let's open it up and see what we got. The nice thing about Bespoke Post is the flexibility. You want to skip a month, return or exchange a box, pause your subscription, or cancel altogether? No sweat. It's free to join, and with no commitment, it's also hassle-free. In this box, I got this awesome Damascus steel knife with a leather case. I got this mini aging barrel so I can age my own liquor now. And I got this cool bootleggers bottle to hold said aged liquor. The lineup of limited run boxes is constantly changing, so you're always going to get something new. It's like you're just giving yourself a gift every month. And because each box has over a $70 value inside, you know whatever you get, it's going to be good. So, if you want to try one of these cool boxes, here's what you're going to want to do. Go down to my video description and click the link. That'll take you to the Bespoke homepage. Use the coupon code MOTH. 20 and it'll give you 20% off your first box. Now, when you click the link, scroll down to the bottom of the page. It'll prompt you to take a little quiz. This is going to help them tailor a box so you get exactly the type of things that you want. Couldn't be easier. After a few hours of clowning around the shop, my glue was sufficiently dry, so I took my brace pieces out of clamps and started working on cleaning them up to get them ready for my sled. First, I ran each piece through the joiner to get a nice straight edge and to get rid of all that glue. Next, I wanted to cut down my front fence piece. Now, I wanted this fence piece to be the exact same height as my aluminum piece so that they, you know, nested nicely against each other. So I ripped my front piece down so that it was exactly the same as that piece of aluminum. This will also allow my stop to, you know, run smoothly without running into the fence. For my back piece, I also cut it down the same size as that piece of aluminum, but I added a little bit of a thicker section where the blade was going to pass through just to give it a little more strength. I've seen this on other sleds, so I thought, you know, I'm, I might as well do what the other people do. I don't know. So after tracing out my general shape, I cut down my straight line with a combination of the band saw and the table saw, and then I finished off by cutting my curves on the band saw. This was a pretty rough cut, so after the band saw, I cleaned everything up over on the bench top oscillating sander. Here's where we're at. I got my base plate done. I got like my little miter alignment stick thingies on the bottom. Those are good to go. So I cut out my back brace, which you just saw. I made this bigger part here because that's where the blade's gonna go. So I just want it to be nice and sturdy since it's gonna be cut part way through there. So this is gonna attach onto the back like this or the front, whatever you wanna call it. And then I cut out my other brace piece here, which is going to go on this side. And then my idea is that this extruded aluminum piece will sit right in front of that, like that and then my stop will attach that I can move back and forth. So my cut line is gonna be like right here. I can move that back and forth. And then because I use the extruded aluminum, that means that I have that other piece of T-track. I think I can put some slots throughout here with those little hold down clamps to make this more multifunctional. So I gotta get all this attached on here. Hope the table saw cuts this extruded aluminum just fine. I think it will. Uh, and uh, we'll get this thing done. Before I went ahead and attached my front and back fence piece, I wanted to soften them up a little bit, so I just ran over them with a roundover bit on my little trim router, and I sanded them by hand just to, you know, make them feel nicer and more inviting. Then I simply applied a small amount of glue to the bottom of each piece, now, this might have been pointless. Glue doesn't stick to pre-finished ply, but I couldn't help myself. I mean, why not? Glue's fun. 
So after clamping it in place, I screwed it in from the bottom, first pre-drilling with that countersink bit to make sure that my screw heads didn't stick out of the bottom and drag on my table saw. And then I just sunk some inch and a half screws right up into my prefabbed fence piece. Once I was done with the back fence, I did the exact same thing for the front fence. Now I wasn't too worried about it being perfectly square at this point. We will fine tune it all here in just a little bit. With my fence all screwed in place, I flipped it over and it was really starting to look like a crosscut sled, which is good because that's what I was making. Next, I just needed to attach that piece of extruded aluminum. I did this quick and simple just with a few screws right inside that track piece. And voila, it was sliding, but it could slide better. So I pulled out every woodworker's best friend, a jar of paste wax, and I lubed up the bottom like I was a crosscut sled proctologist. That was gross, I'm sorry. I just couldn't help myself. After tastefully lubing it up, I flipped it over, and what do you know? Now it slides like a dream. Ooh. At this point, we were ready to make our initial cut through the sled and the aluminum. And like I said, I had no clue how this was going to go. So I very slowly just inched the sled forward, waiting for a disaster, and... Uh, what? 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 It... Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't bad at all. In fact, I kinda, kinda liked that. Just nice and clean. Who knew? The table saw cut through that aluminum like butter. I don't even know why I doubted. So at this point, you could be done. We got a really nice functioning sled. The last thing we'd wanna do is double check that this fence is perfectly square with the blade. Now, what I like about this extruded aluminum on the front is it would be really easy to adjust. All we'd have to do is basically figure out where it's off and then shim on one side or the other to tweak that fence. So there's a lot of adjustability in this, which I like, but I'm not done yet. We could stop, but why when we could make it way cooler? Some things I want to do. I want to add some tracks to it so I can have those hold down clamps. If I'm using, you know, little pieces of stock, I don't want to use my fingers to hold it down. So I'm gonna add those. And then almost all of my crosscut sleds, after like a week of using them with a regular blade, I end up ruining them because I put a dado stack in there and I just run it through and leave a big old channel. And then you don't have the zero clearance anymore. So I wanna figure out a way that I can make this adaptable to either have a dado stack or a regular blade. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Let's do it. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna do what I said we should do and make sure the fence is perfectly square. It was actually off a few thousandths of an inch, so I just inserted some shims on the left side. For shims, I just used playing cards, and then I ran a board through the saw using the crosscut sled, and with a square, I tested to, well, make sure it was square. And it was perfect. Now to add our T-tracks on the surface of the sled. Now, lots of people would probably just dado in a groove and drop them in place, but that seemed way too complicated. So I ripped down a piece of half inch ply that was the perfect dimensions to fit inside my sled. Then I grabbed my sled because I have a sled now. And first I cut a nice flush end on one side of that pre-cut piece of ply. Then I just chuck that aside and I cut another strip. This strip is going to go on the far right side of my saw and make up what will become the first of multiple panels that I will lay across the base plate of the crosscut sled. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about here right now. So I took that first cut panel and again using that countersink bit I just drilled a few holes and I screwed the whole panel in place. Next, I cut down my piece of T-Track into three equal pieces that would be, oh, about two inches shy of the internal dimensions of my sled. This is really important. I don't want them to go the full length 
or else I will not be able to get my hold down clamps in there. Or if I put them in there, they'll be locked in permanently, which means they could and most likely be in the way at some point. I wanted to be able to remove them, hence the fact that I'm leaving that little gap up towards the top of the sled. So after cutting my first piece of aluminum, I then slid my plywood over until it was perfectly flush against that T-track and I ran it back through the table saw, cutting a nice little strip that perfectly fit between that T-track and my table saw blade. Now this strip is the most important strip in the entire top of the sled. Because I'm only screwing it in place, that means I can remove it. So when inevitably I run a dado stack through this sled and make a nice large channel, I can just pull that piece out, insert another one, and I'll be back to a zero clearance little insert and not ruin my sled. Pretty tricky, huh? With my insert piece cut, I slide that piece of plywood over until it's flush with the insert and mark out where I want my second T-track to land. Next, I'm just gonna cut that strip using my cross-cut sled. Isn't it nice that we can just use the thing we're making to cut the things we need for the thing that we're making? I mean, I think it's kinda nice. So after marking it out, I run it back through the table saw and I cut another nice strip. Now this I can push all the way up against my insert piece. The blade will eventually cut another groove there, but for the time being it doesn't really matter that it's tight up against that. Then I drill some more countersunk holes and I screw it back in place. Then I slide my second piece of T-track until it's flush against that strip and I screw it down. Are you picking up on the theme here? We're just pretty much gonna work our way across the entire sled until we got it all filled in with, you know, pieces of plywood and T-track and more pieces of plywood. So after butting up our second piece of T-track, we cut another strip and, well, we butt that against the T-track. Then we line up our last and final piece of T-track and we... I mean, it's no mystery, we screw it to the base of the sled. Man, this is getting really redundant. Then finally, we just mark out our last and final piece of ply, and using our beautifully working crosscut sled, we cut that strip down, and we just, yep, you guessed it, screw it in place. Just like this. Then with all of our plywood and T-Track installed, the last thing to do was to slide those hold down clamps into the T-Track and see how it looks. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but I think this looks like a pretty freaking cool crosscut sled. And the final icing on the cake is that Jonathan Katz Moses stop, which will work perfectly in combination with this sled. Then before I could call this piece truly complete, I wanted to add a little block right where the blade passes through that front fence. This is just a helpful reminder not to put my fingers there. I don't want to cross cut off a finger. And voila, we have a wonderfully functioning cross cut sled made entirely from crap I found laying around my shop. Who would have known? Well, there you have it. What a wild ride. I literally had no clue how I was gonna build this and it was completely born out of the parts that I had laying around and some small knowledge of how I wanted to put this together. That being said, I'm pretty stoked with this thing. I think it's sweet. I got these hold down clamps, which are great because you know, I can keep my fingers out of the way if it's really close to the blade, which is awesome. This extruded aluminum worked great and I know it's perfectly straight, which is awesome. The one thing I don't love about the extruded aluminum is it's not like a piece of hardwood where I'm gonna get a really nice crisp cut as like, you know, a sacrificial back piece. But the cool thing about Jonathan's stop is that it extends out. It doesn't have to be flush against the fence like this. It can move out, I don't know, probably an inch and a half, two inches almost. So I could very easily put a sacrificial piece of hardwood on here so I get nice crisp cuts over at this side of the fence and it's still gonna have plenty of room. The other thing I like about this is that I did the top in these different sections. 
So if one section gets damaged or I mess it up, I can always just pull it out and throw another one in there. And if I wanna do a dado stack, this little strip here can come out, I can put another insert in that's wide enough for my dado stack, and then I can put this one back in when I'm done. So it's pretty universal. It's amazing what you can build finding things around your shop. Now, I'm gonna link everything you need for this in the video description below, but if you buy one thing here, buy this J Cats Moses Stop. It's amazing, it'll work great for the crosscut sled, it'll work great for your miter saw fence, you can use this all over the place. And they're not that expensive. I think they're like 35 bucks, 40 bucks, something like that. So pick one of these up in the link down below. Now, I gotta get back to building the boat.